On the outskirts of a forgotten village, nestled deep within a forest thick with towering pines, there lurked a legend. This was no ordinary legend but one that haunted the villagers' dreams and kept their children indoors after dusk. It was the tale of the scourge of Moonlight the Hungry, terrifying werewolf. The moon hung heavy and full in the sky, its silver light casting long, eerie shadows through the dense foliage. Each step through the forest floor was cushioned by a layer of fallen needles, muffling the sounds of anyone who dared to walk the paths at night. The air was still, to still, as if the forest itself held its breath in fear. Martha, a young woman known for her bravery, had ventured out that evening. She was determined to gather herbs for her ailing father, herbs that could only be found by the light of the full moon. With a satchel slung over her shoulder and a lantern in hand, she navigated the narrow trails, every so often glancing up at the moon, feeling its gaze upon her. Suddenly, a chilling howl pierced the silence, sending a shiver down Martha's spine. She froze, lantern held aloft, its light trembling in her unsteady grasp. The howl was followed by a series of guttural growls, growing closer with each passing moment. Martha's heart pounded in her chest as she realized she was not alone. She quickened her pace, trying to remember the way back to the village. The trees seemed to close in around her, their branches like skeletal hands reaching out to snag her clothes. Panic set in as she heard the unmistakable sound of heavy footfalls behind her, moving with a predatory grace that only a beast could muster. Martha stumbled into a small clearing, the moonlight illuminating her terrified face. She turned slowly, her breath hitching as her eyes met the glowing, malevolent gaze of the werewolf. It stood at the edge of the clearing, its massive form silhouetted against the moon. Its fur was matted and dark, its jaws parted to reveal rows of sharp, glistening teeth. The beast's eyes burned with a hunger that was almost human. The werewolf stepped forward, and Martha took a shaky step back, her mind racing. She had heard stories of the creature but had never imagined she would come face to face with it. The villagers said it was once a man, cursed by the moon to wander the forest in eternal hunger, always searching for its next meal. As the beast advanced, Martha's back hit a tree, trapping her. The werewolf's growls grew louder, echoing through the trees. Martha closed her eyes, bracing for the end. But just as the creature lunged, a distant shout echoed through the forest. The werewolf hesitated, its ears twitching at the sound. The shout came again, closer this time, followed by the flickering light of more lanterns. The villagers had come, drawn by the same instinct that had kept them safe for generations. The beast snarled in frustration, its eyes darting between Martha and the approaching lights. With a final, furious growl, it turned and vanished into the shadows, leaving Martha trembling against the tree. The villagers found her moments later, their faces etched with concern. Martha's father embraced her, relief washing over him. But even as they led her back to the safety of the village, Martha couldn't shake the feeling that the werewolf's gaze was still upon her, watching, waiting, and hungering for the night when it could strike again. In the days that followed, the village buzzed with tales of Martha's narrow escape. Elders spoke in hushed tones, warning everyone to remain vigilant. Yet, despite their best efforts to maintain a semblance of normalcy, an undercurrent of fear rippled through the community. Nightfall brought with it a tension that settled like a heavy fog, wrapping around each villager and suffocating their sense of security. Martha, though outwardly calm, felt a profound unease. She couldn't shake the memory of those glowing eyes, the snarling maw that had been mere inches from her face. She knew the werewolf was still out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for the right moment to strike again. Determined to uncover the truth, she began to delve into the village's history, searching for any clues about the origins of the beast. In the dusty attic of her family's cottage, Martha unearthed a collection of old journals and manuscripts, passed down through generations. One particularly weathered journal, its leather cover cracked and faded, caught her eye. As she carefully turned the brittle pages, 
she discovered entries written by her great-grandfather, a man named Elias. Elias had been the village's healer, a man of wisdom and knowledge who had recorded his experiences in meticulous detail. One entry, dated nearly a century ago, described a mysterious stranger who had arrived in the village under the cover of darkness. The stranger, a man named Alaric, had been wounded, his body marred by deep, savage gashes. Elias had taken him in, tending to his wounds and offering shelter. As Martha read on, a chilling realization began to take shape. Alaric had spoken of a curse, one that had been placed upon him by a vengeful witch. According to his account, he had been transformed into a werewolf, doomed to roam the forest each full moon, consumed by an insatiable hunger. Elias had tried to find a cure, but his efforts had been in vain. Alaric had eventually vanished, leaving behind only rumors and fear. Determined to learn more, Martha sought out the oldest living villager, a reclusive woman named Agatha, who lived in a dilapidated cottage at the edge of the forest. Agatha was known for her knowledge of the village's folklore and dark secrets. When Martha arrived, she found the old woman tending to a small garden, her gnarled hands deftly plucking herbs. Ah, Martha, Agatha said, her voice a raspy whisper. I've been expecting you. Martha was taken aback. You have? How did you know I would come? Agatha's eyes, clouded with age, seemed to pierce through Martha. The forest speaks, child. It tells me of your encounter with the beast and your search for answers. Martha explained what she had found in Elias's journal, her voice trembling with urgency. Agatha listened intently, nodding as if confirming her own suspicions. The curse is real, Agatha said finally, and it can be broken, but it requires great sacrifice. What kind of sacrifice? Martha asked, her heart pounding. Agatha leaned in closer, her breath warm and fragrant with herbs. The curse was born of blood, and it can only be undone by blood. You must find the witch who cast the spell, and she must willingly lift it. But be warned, the path to her lair is treacherous, and she guards her secrets fiercely. Martha felt a chill run down her spine. The prospect of confronting a powerful witch was terrifying, but she knew she had no choice. The safety of the village depended on her success. As she left Agatha's cottage, the old woman's words echoed in her mind, a haunting reminder of the dangers that lay ahead. Armed with this new knowledge, Martha prepared for her journey into the heart of the forest, where the witch's lair was said to be hidden. She gathered supplies, including a map that Agatha had given her, and set out at dawn, her resolve unwavering. The forest seemed to close in around her, its shadows deepening as she ventured further from the village. As she walked, she couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig, sent her heart racing, but she pressed on, determined to find the witch and end the curse once and for all. Days passed in a blur of dense underbrush and towering trees. The forest was a labyrinth, and the map offered little comfort. Just as Martha began to doubt her path, she stumbled upon a clearing unlike any other. At its center stood a crooked, ancient tree, its gnarled branches twisting toward the sky like skeletal fingers. Beneath the tree's twisted roots, a faint glow emanated, casting eerie shadows across the clearing. Martha approached cautiously, her breath catching in her throat as she realized the glow was coming from a hidden entrance, a passage leading deep underground. Summoning every ounce of courage, Martha descended into the darkness, her lantern barely illuminating the stone steps beneath her feet. The air grew colder with each step, and the walls seemed to close in around her. Finally, she emerged into a cavernous chamber, its ceiling lost in shadow. At the center of the chamber stood a figure cloaked in black, her eyes gleaming with a malevolent light. The witch. Martha's heart pounded in her chest as she stepped forward, her voice steady despite her fear. I've come to end the curse, she declared. The witch laughed, a sound that echoed through the chamber like the tolling of a death knell. And what makes you think you can? She hissed. Martha took a deep breath, her resolve firm. Because I know the truth, and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to save my village. The witch's eyes narrowed, and for a moment, silence reigned. Then, with a flick of her wrist, she conjured a swirling vortex of light and shadow. Very well, she said. Prove your worth, and perhaps I shall consider your request. 
As the vortex closed around her, Martha felt herself being pulled into a realm of darkness and light, a place where the line between reality and nightmare blurred. The witch's voice echoed in her mind, a sinister whisper that filled her with dread. Face your deepest fears, child, the witch intoned. Only then will you find the power to break the curse. And so, Martha's true test began, a journey through a labyrinth of horrors that would challenge her courage, her spirit, and her very will to survive. Martha found herself standing at the edge of an otherworldly forest, its trees twisted and gnarled like those in a haunted dream. The air was thick with fog, and an unnatural silence pressed down upon her. She took a cautious step forward, the ground beneath her feet soft and yielding, like walking on the surface of a bog. The shadows seemed to pulse with a life of their own, moving and shifting in the corners of her vision. As she ventured deeper into this eerie realm, the forest seemed to close in around her, the trees forming an impenetrable wall of dark wood and tangled branches. Her lantern cast a feeble light, barely piercing the gloom. Every few steps, she paused, listening for any signs of danger. The witch's voice echoed in her mind, a sinister reminder of the trials that lay ahead. The first trial came suddenly and without warning. A guttural growl resonated from the shadows, and Martha spun around, her lantern revealing the hulking form of a monstrous valve. Its eyes glowed with an unnatural light, and its fangs glistened with malice. It lunged at her, and she barely managed to dodge, rolling to the side as the beast's jaw snapped shut on empty air. Martha scrambled to her feet, her heart pounding. The vault circled her, its growls echoing through the forest. She remembered the words of her ancestors, stories of how courage and wit could triumph over brute strength. As the vault prepared to strike again, Martha reached into her satchel and pulled out a vial of powdered silver, a substance said to be deadly to creatures of the night. She hurled it at the beast, the powder exploding in a brilliant flash of light. The valve howled in agony, its fur sizzling where the silver touched. Seizing the opportunity, Martha dashed past the creature and continued deeper into the forest. The howls of the wounded valve faded behind her, but the sense of dread only grew stronger. She knew the worst was yet to come. Hours, or perhaps days, seemed to pass in that nightmarish landscape. Time lost all meaning as Martha faced trial after trial. She crossed a river of blood, navigated a labyrinth of thorns, and confronted specters of her deepest fears. Each challenge tested her resolve, pushing her to the brink of despair. But she pressed on, driven by the memory of her father's ailing face and the determination to save her village. Finally, she emerged from the forest into a clearing bathed in an eerie silver light. At its center stood a massive stone altar, and atop it lay a bound figure, writhing in pain. As Martha approached, she realized with a shock that the figure was Alaric, the man cursed to become the werewolf. His eyes, once human, now glowed with a desperate plea for help. The witch appeared beside the altar, her presence sending a chill down Martha's spine. You have come far, the witch said, her voice dripping with malice. But the final trial awaits. To break the curse, you must make a sacrifice. Martha's heart sank. What kind of sacrifice? She asked, though she feared the answer. The witch's eyes gleamed with cruel delight. Your own blood, she said. Only by offering a piece of yourself can you hope to free him. Martha looked at Alaric, his face contorted with pain. She knew what she had to do. With trembling hands, she drew a small dagger from her satchel, its blade reflecting the pale light of the clearing. She stepped forward, standing before the altar. Very well, she said, her voice steady despite her fear. I will make the sacrifice. As she pressed the blade to her palm, pain shot through her, but she gritted her teeth and continued. Blood flowed from the wound, dripping onto the altar and mingling with the cursed man's own. The witch watched with a twisted smile, her eyes glowing with dark magic. A powerful tremor shook the ground, and the air crackled with energy. The altar glowed brighter, the light intensifying, until Martha had to shield her eyes. When the light finally subsided, she found herself back in the forest clearing, the altar now empty. Alaric was gone, and in his place stood a man, his eyes clear and free of the curse. Martha, he said, his voice filled with gratitude. You have saved me. But before she could respond, 
The witch's laughter echoed through the forest. Foolish girl, she taunted. You have freed him, but the curse is not broken. It has merely passed to another. Martha's heart froze. What do you mean? The witch's eyes gleamed with wicked delight. The curse requires a host, she explained. By offering your blood, you have taken his place. You are now the werewolf. Martha stumbled back, her mind reeling. The realization hit her like a physical blow. She had saved Alaric, but at a terrible cost. She could already feel the change beginning, a primal hunger stirring within her. The witch's laughter echoed in her ears as darkness closed in around her. As the full moon rose high in the sky, the villagers back home felt a chill wind sweep through the streets. They looked toward the forest with a sense of foreboding, unaware of the new terror that now lurked in its shadows. And Martha, now bound by the curse, began her transformation, her body contorting and shifting as the beast within her awoke. The village's nightmare was far from over. The scourge of moonlight had returned, but this time, it wore the face of a savior turned monster. The werewolf's hunger was insatiable, and the hunt had only just begun. Martha's screams of agony echoed through the forest as her body twisted and contorted, bones snapping and reshaping. Her vision blurred, shifting from human perception to the heightened senses of a predator. The pain was unbearable, a searing fire that consumed her every thought, but as the transformation completed, her mind was clouded by a primal hunger. The witch's laughter faded, leaving only the sounds of the night. The full moon hung high in the sky, casting an eerie glow over the forest. Martha's human consciousness struggled to maintain control, but the beast within her was too powerful. The werewolf's instincts took over, and she bolted into the trees, moving with an unnatural speed and grace. Back in the village, the people had gathered at the central square, discussing the strange, ominous feeling that had settled over them. They hoped Martha's journey would bring an end to their fears, but as the night deepened, their hope turned to dread. The distant howls of a werewolf reached their ears, and they realized that the nightmare was far from over. Martha's father, weak and frail, clutched his chest as he listened to the haunting cries. He had believed in his daughter's strength, but now a terrible realization gripped his heart. The villagers began to arm themselves, lighting torches and preparing for the inevitable confrontation. The werewolf burst from the forest, its eyes blazing with a feral hunger. The villagers gasped in horror as they recognized the beast. It was Martha, transformed into the very creature they had feared. Panic erupted, and people scattered in all directions, desperate to escape the carnage. Martha's father stood his ground, tears streaming down his face as he called out to her. Martha, please, fight it. You have to fight it. For a moment, the werewolf hesitated, its growls faltering as Martha's human consciousness resurfaced. But the hunger was too strong, the curse too powerful. With a guttural snarl, the beast lunged at her father, tearing into him with savage ferocity. The villagers watched in horror, unable to intervene as the scene unfolded. Martha's father fell to the ground, his lifeblood soaking the earth. The werewolf's bloodlust only grew, and it turned its attention to the fleeing villagers. Screams filled the night as the beast hunted down its prey, tearing through homes and ripping apart anyone who crossed its path. The village, once a place of hope and safety, was now a scene of chaos and death. Firelight flickered on the walls of cottages, casting grotesque shadows as the werewolf wreaked havoc. The brave few who tried to fight back were swiftly overpowered, their efforts futile against the cursed creature's strength. As dawn approached, the village lay in ruins, its streets stained with blood. The survivors huddled together, their eyes wide with terror and grief. The werewolf, now sated, retreated into the forest, leaving behind a trail of devastation. Among the wreckage, Martha's father lay motionless, his eyes glazed over. His last breath had been a plea for his daughter's salvation, a plea that had gone unanswered. The villagers knew they had lost more than just their loved ones they had lost their sense of security, their trust in the world. The legend of the scourge of moonlight was reborn, more terrifying than ever. The village would never forget the night Martha became the beast, a savior turned monster. And as the sun rose, its light revealing the horrors of the night, the villagers understood that the curse would never truly be broken. The werewolf's hunger would return with every full moon, 
a reminder of the darkness that lay hidden within. And so, the village lived in perpetual fear, haunted by the knowledge that the next full moon would bring the werewolf back to their doorsteps. The forest, once a place of mystery and wonder, was now a forbidden zone, its depths hiding the cursed creature that had once been one of their own.